Dwyer. I serve on the partner engagement team at Girls Who Code, which means that I have the really fun job of connecting companies and organizations like Uber um, to the girls who are in our programs. I'm going to talk a little bit today about I'm going to talk a little bit today about Girls Who Code, what we do, um, some exciting things that we have on the horizon, and then I think the last thing, which is the most important thing, is all of you and how you can get involved in the mission and the cause. So the first thing is <clears throat> just talking a little bit about the problem. I don't think we need to spend too much time on this. I know that we just touched on it. Um, but I think this is a really good example of why programs um, like Girls Who Code, like Built by Girls and Technovation are really, really important. Um, if you're interested on more um, information around women and um, the closing the gender gap in technology, we actually did a really interesting study about two years ago with Accenture um, on it, and we have a little bit more information on our website. So I'll, I'll kind of refer you to check out our website if you're interested in learning a little bit more. But today I'm going to focus on what's really important, which is the girls that are in our programs. Um, so talking a little bit about our approach, who are the girls that we serve? Well, first and foremost, we serve girls who are under underrepresented in computer science and typically have little to no access to computer science um, in school. So about 50% of the girls that are in our programs are coming from historically underrepresented groups and identify as black, Latina, and low income. So our model, we call it the three C's. Um, and I think this is really important, the first of which over here is capabilities, um, career, and then lastly, I think which is so, so important is community. At Girls Who Code, we really try to focus on building a sisterhood, not only um, teaching girls about computer science and how it builds up the world around them, but also how can you build a sisterhood and a community of other girls and other coders in your community. And um, I think this is one of the main things that has really helped to sustain and grow this movement. Um, so let's talk a little bit about our program. So we have a lot of different kinds of programs, um, but the, the main two programs of which I'll touch on briefly, the first of which is our summer immersion program. Um, so this is um, a immersive seven-week course um, for high school students, for girls who have had really no access or exposure to computer science. Um, and we take these groups of girls and we um, put them inside of a tech company for the summer, um, which I think is a really interesting thing because not only are they getting seven weeks packed filled with um, lots of different uh, computer science el elementary concepts, but they are also able to kind of interact um, in, inside of a, a tech culture and inside of a tech company, which is really fun. Um, the other program that we offer is our clubs program, and this program really grew out of our need to really expand our summer immersion program outside of the typical tech hubs that are in the U.S. Um, and so this program spans across um, urban areas, rural areas. By the end of this year, we'll have launched 3,500 clubs um, across the U.S., which is really exciting. Um, the other thing about this program is that it really allows us to expand our reach to younger girls. So as our summer immersion program is focused on girls who are in high school, um, the, summer, the clubs program um, expands to sixth grade, and pretty soon we're going to be expanding to third um, grade as well. So that's super exciting. So I'll talk a little bit about the things that are coming up for us um, that are on the horizon for Girls Who Code. Um, so the first is international expansion, which we're really excited about. Um, we've had a lot of demand for our club's curriculum outside of the U.S. So later on in 2018, we'll, we'll be piloting a few sites internationally. Um, and then... Um, oops. And then um, one of the other things is our college loops. So as our girls are graduating high school, they're going on to college, they're studying computer science, we've really seen a demand to connect girls on campus. Um, so we're adding an additional program called College Loops. It's really going to connect girls um, and kind of build the sisterhood while they're in college. 
Um, and the last thing is Girl Summit. At the end of this year, or rather in the fall, um, we're planning a Girl Summit, which is going to be kind of like an online platform on International Day of the Girl that will bring together a lot of different girls um, to really just celebrate all of their accomplishments um, in the clubs program and in the summer immersion program. Um, and I think there will be a lot of ways to get involved in that day if you're interested. Um, so lastly, the most important thing is how can you engage? How can you get in involved with Girls Who Code? Our programs would surely not be what they are today if it wasn't for all of our volunteers, all of our corporate partners who really help um, to sustain this movement. I think the easiest way um, and the most simplest way is to really just follow us, follow us on social media, um, just check out what we're doing, check out what our girls are bu building. Um, it's really awesome to just see all the work that's um, going on all across the country with Girls Who Code and Girls Who Code alumni. Um, the first way I would say is um, by using the Girls Who Code books. So we actually launched um, a book series um, last year that really is um, attempting to tap into a younger market um, so that we can get girls really interested in computer science a lot earlier. Um, and so we have a lot of great volunteers who um, donate books to local libraries and community centers to kind of um, start coding and computer science education a little bit earlier. Um, and also our clubs program that's going to be focused on third through fifth grade girls is going to be off of these books as well, which is really exciting. Um, the second thing is to volunteer your time as a clubs facilitator. Um, so even if you're not technical, um, we have a lot of opportunities. If you have um, an extra like three hours a week to volunteer, it's a bit of a commitment. Um, but our facilitators are really the backbone of our clubs program. We honestly could not put them on without them. Um, so if you are interested in meeting local girls in your community and really supporting them through um, their coding experience, this is an awesome way to not only get involved, but also meet other facilitators and volunteers in your community as well. And then the last thing, um, which is, I'm a little biased, but I think is most important, is really just to partner with us. We have so many um, awesome corporate sponsors, Uber included, um, that really just supports our work and also um, bridges the gap between all the female um, computer scientists that are within your organization and the girls in your community who want to look up to those women. Um, so a really awesome way um, is to just um, partner with us. This photo is actually taken um, from last, last fall, I believe, we did um, a panel with Uber um, and a, a few of their engineers. And so a lot of great opportunities. If you're interested, I'll be kind of floating out around through the rest of the day. So would love to kind of talk about Girls Who Code and the different ways um, that we can partner. Thank you. So yeah, I think that's it. I'm gonna pass it over to the fight girls. I just want to say we're really grateful to be in front of you today. I am Tiana Cara, and I lead partnerships and growth for a rock star organization called Built by Girls. So basically, we were created in 2014 with this idea that we can challenge young women to harness the power of technology to do, build, create whatever the hell they want. Um, so from there, we realized that there was a lot of conversation around the importance of girls in STEM, but we realized that coding is just the beginning of the conversation. So how can we engage them a little bit more so they know what else is out there, what else is available, and how coding can power and the future uh, in terms of what they want to do. So what we started doing was building programs that made tech tangible for them. Um, we build programs like Girls Who Fund, which basically was an internship to teach girls how to become junior sharks, which was really fun. Um, we also had the challenge, which was a, na a nationwide pitch competition that allowed girls to showcase the things that they were building and creating. And then from there, they could win $10,000 in funding to support their product. So through programs like this, we've reached over 10,000 girls to date, and we're really proud to say that. And what we've learned about these girls is, first of all, they are formidable AF. <laughs> they are ambitious, excited, creative, and frankly, they are much cooler than I was. I worked at Target, uh, so <laughs> my cool level is down. Um, but basically, they are rock stars. And through the programs that we ran, we also learned three other things. Firstly, they were looking for exposure to the variety of career options that are available to them. Two, they were looking for help when it came to practical skill development. So coding organizations, rock star ones like Girls Who Code, teach you that first step, those, that initial step in terms of hard skills. 
They needed help with the practical skill side of things. And then lastly, they were looking for help with building their first network in technology. So if you look at that very last bullet, number three, you'll see 90% of the girls that we surveyed said that they were looking for help in terms of having access to a professional who has a job in tech. So clearly that was saying that they were looking for a mentor. We get it. But we know that sometimes mentorship has, let's say, the, the, the cons, the negative side of things. It can seem a little heady, a bit of a time suck. And sometimes it's difficult to engage with a, a young girl when you don't necessarily know what you should be talking about. So what we decided to do was take the word mentorship, throw it away, and start fresh, and actually consider building a community for her, a collective of professionals just like you, who have interesting stories to tell, interesting backgrounds that may not just be one dimensional. Um, how can your story and your experience excite her, engage her, and basically give her the understanding that she needs and to leverage her into her first career? So from there, we built WAVE. It's a one-to-one -one matching platform that connects experts, just like you all in the room, with young women interested in just pursuing and getting an understanding of the jobs available to them. So quickly, here's how it works. First, we leverage tech. We built an algorithm that connects the professionals with the young girls. We look at a number of different data points, like your expertise, clearly, and her interest, and then also personality style, learning style, and things like that. Then the algorithm starts to spit out pairs. And from there, you meet monthly. So once a month for one hour over a three-month period of time. And that's it. She then moves on to a new advisor, and you move on to a new advisee. From there, we've also given you content guides to help to facilitate the conversation, because let's be real, sometimes it's really intimidating engaging with a 16-year-old. So we help to ensure that the conversation's staying on topic, and we're helping you tell your story. We're not telling it for you through our content guides. And then lastly, you are responsible for connecting her with two people who have jobs related to her interest, because now through the third engagement, by the third engagement, you know what she's interested in. So basically, you're building her first network in technology. Um, so that's quickly how it works. I've then also brought a small video, short one, just to basically show you an example of a pair. This is Aubrey. She's a UX UI lead for Zola. And this is Joan. And she is a rising freshman in college. My name is Joan. I am a high school senior from High Tech High School in North Bergen, New Jersey. I'm Aubrey. I'm a UX designer at Zola, a wedding company. <laughs> Tech is absolutely everywhere, and that's the greatest thing about it. So I'm actually um, an immigrant. I immigrated here from the Philippines in 2007. When I moved to America, you know, things changed. You know, a lot more people are diverse. There's just so many new ideas, it's a land filled with opportunities. My parents, so my mom, right now, she's actually working as a librarian. And my dad, who never got, um, who never finished his high school education, is now working at a meat packing factory. I didn't really have someone from technology to go to and ask for advice, you know, what classes should I take? Um, what should I major in college? You know, what are the different positions in this field? So Built by Girls Wave um, gave me people to ask for advice. I think there's something missing in the early stages of of starting a career. I, I wanted to kind of be that person for girls just starting out um, because I didn't have that. You just There's so many questions that you have that like if, if I could help in any way, I wanted to be available because who you know is everything in this, especially in tech, it's such a small world. And I think that's one big thing that Built by Girls especially, um, their focus is on. So I'm not, I'm not in a straight path when I go to college, I know that I want to explore with different fields. And Aubrey, I hope to get more advice from you as I begin to enter this crazy adult world. I have such a strong passion for women in leadership because the more you see it, the more real it becomes. And seeing you grow and um, learn all the different things you've learned is really exciting and inspiring. <laughs> to have people like mentors like you who are always, you know, providing me with resources, you know, that's what makes me know that I got this. I'm gonna get into this industry one way or another. So that's one of our matches. Um, and basically here are all the ways that you can engage with us on social media, but in my opinion, this one is the most important. 
you can join us. You can become one of the advisors that we have that helps to leverage a young girl in technology. So myself, Tiana, and Corey, the other rock star wearing that sparkly sweatshirt in the back, um, we will be out in the lobby. Please reach out to us. We'd love to get you pre-signed up, just basically getting your email information so we can give you more. Uh, but thanks so much for your time today, guys. My name is Tara Shaklovsky. I'm the founder and CEO of Iridescent, which is a global engineering and technology education nonprofit. And one of our programs is Technovation, and we are super thrilled that Uber is one of our supporters. So Technovation is the world's largest technology entrepreneurship program for young girls. So girls are challenged to find a problem in their community, um, actually code a fully working mobile app and launch a startup. So they have to come up with a full business plan. Um, Eric Ries, who did Lean Startup, helped us create the entrepreneurship curriculum. And these girls are absolutely phenomenal. Um, so I, I wanted to share a little story about how we got started. So we are actually a pretty old nonprofit. Um, and Technovation started in 2010 when the wave of uh, we need more women was not even, nobody was talking about that. Um, and um, we had girls from New York actually come up with an app and they called it Hail New York and it was a ride sharing app. Uh, so I wanted to share that with you. Um, but it's also, people always ask us, um, we have like maybe 5,000 really, really innovative apps that the girls have created. They always ask us, what happens to these apps? And I say, um, our product is not the apps, it's the girl. Um, it's a very, very unusual experience for girls to actually launch a a startup and it, it, it transforms um, their career trajectories. Um, so we started in a very sort of um, traditional model where we would get girls to come to tech companies in the first three years. And what we found was that girls who didn't live within driving distance or who couldn't afford a parent to drive them were not able to access the program. It's a full nine week program. Um, and so although it was easy for the tech company mentors to mentor the girls, it wasn't really serving the girls uh, or the girls who really needed that kind of access. And so in 2013, um, I decided we're going to go online. And I actually ended up losing my whole team because they didn't think that was the right decision. We launched one of the first online platforms. Um, I don't know if anybody remembers, there was Mozilla's Peer-to-Peer -peer University. This was before sort of the MOOC movement. And it was a real leap of faith, but then we got girls from 13 countries competing. And um, it was just such an amazing story of, of diversity and innovation where girls uh, from developing countries were actually coming up with ideas that were way better than the girls in Silicon Valley. Um, and then from there on, um, the program has grown. And this year, we're in 113 countries, and we have 20,000 girls um, going through the season. The season ends next, next week, and we are looking for a lot of judges. So if you are interested in seeing what innovation looks like from Ethiopia, Somalia, India, Bolivia, Uzbekistan, um, we need you. And it's an easy way to, to actually be inspired yourself um, and, of course, change a girl's life. And um, I wanted to share a quick um, video. So a woman, um, a filmmaker, Leslie Chilcott, uh, some of you have, may have known of Inconvenient Truth. Um, she was looking to create a, a documentary about girls and, and women in tech, and she found us. So she created a documentary. You can get it on Netflix or Amazon video is called Code Girl. And I'll play a trailer here, but I also wanted to give a shout out to Kate Parker because, because of her, um, this film actually, it, it was launched on YouTube and it got a million views in a couple of days and it really, really helped us in our, in our global journey. In our school, we have 67 kids with hepatitis A because of the water. 18% of women engaged in self-harm and 6% of men said the same. Drunk driving has plagued real problems, such as women's safety, waste removal, and childhood obesity. ¿Qué problema resuelve? We see a lot of problems in our town. We don't have boxes for garbage. Who knows better the problems in the community than the people? A business and technology competition, you have the ability to practice your English, learn some new things. My computer science teacher sent out this huge email to all the students about tech innovation. Welcome to the Technovation World Pitch Competition. You need to find the girls to do it. 
Like most of the girls were like, no, computer scientists for boys. Only 7% of tech startups are led by women. And now I feel like I look everywhere and I'm like, that's a problem. And then this app could solve it. This is the next social media button. We are sophomores and we're all 15 years old. Join us to promote a cleaner, greener, and safer environment. We want to make it perfect an actual problem and finding a way to solve it. Like that is a really good feeling. So just do another plug. So if you're interested, uh, sign up as a judge. You can email me, tara at and we'll hook you up. So thank you.